Coca-Cola Foundation. Ibuledua University launched three days ago the Circular Economy Project. And we have a plastic bailer now, and the target is to remove 70,000 plastic in the next two months. And we intend to achieve that. We have already started. So segregation is a, yeah. Segregation is a mandatory requirement. I'm surprised that even at this hotel, there are supposed to be a minimum of four colored waste bins there for us to drop our papers, drop the plastics, drop. The... So it has to be, you see, a policy must make it a mandatory requirement for hotels, hospitality business to have this. We can start segregation at this level, at this at the domestic, commercial, and industrial level. So it's possible. But that is the key to the recovery process that we talked about. Then the co-supervision thing. This co-supervision is very possible. It's a model I developed with Lancaster University 10 years ago, and it's just operating. We are now operating here today in Nigeria. It is a co, it's called a co-design, a co-delivery, co-location, co-funding, business model for industry academia partnership. i give you a practical example. At the Bidadio University, what we did was to set up a board of industry academia with the current NAP NAPTEC DG as the chairman. Our industry partners are all enrolled in that board, 10 of them, and they meet every quarter to determine what is the new direction and the demands of industries. With this on ground, we are able to get, assess the co-supervisors. The source co-supervisors are available. Please don't underrate, underrate the R&D departments of the industries. They have PhD and highly cerebral staff that are thoroughly trained as on field experience that we require in academia. Okay, sir. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. in this country. So it's been done. It's well known that we can valorize solid waste and generate power, which will solve many problems, create more jobs, uh, reduce the, the loss of electricity that we have. So many advantages will come, but the policy environment is not there yet. Um, do you want to respond to this? No, no, okay. Okay. So, so, can we hear from you? Okay. Thank you, Prof. Uh, I would like to respond on the arsenic question. Actually, uh, from the results obtained uh, using that uh, EDXRF, out of nine samples that I have, I have only one result. That's at Ergoji, at the first surface of Ergoji area. So, actually, the result was far, far below the expected value, which is 3.0.
So all that is also, if you can see from my table, I shows NA, which is non-identified, non-identified. Secondly, for the nickel, you ask me about whether I have uh, tested it biologically or something on that. Uh, I used work uh, with the statistical analysis. Then I compared the value of 10 with respect to the value that, uh, that are acceptable worldwide. Thank you. Thank you, sir. For the question, why rice or silica? It's cheaper, sir, because you use very minimal quantity of acid. Thank you very much. Let me also tell you that uh, my university were using rice hulls to produce briquettes for wood stoves. We also, I know a friend who is also using it to produce the feed for goats. He's using uh, palm leaves, dry, grind and mixed with other things. He's also using rice hulls and it's coming to 3,000 Naira per bag, which is now cheaper than uh, chicken feed. It's just for using for goods production. It's a, a lecturer in agriculture engineering in my university, but it's a private project. Uh, Mr. Vice President, I, I think you can see that this area has a lot going, which we can still do work on. Maybe it will be now on it. Because, for example, nobody has talked about incentives for this area. In Sweden and Germany, where I lived, if I, I liked money, I would pack this thing, go to the city center, put them in the the, the the container there, press, and they'll give me cash in return. So, yes, so that's, that's incentive in Europe to bring your waste. And if you need money, you move your waste to that place. It's a lot of money. In fact, the, the, the cost depends on whether it's glass or plastic or biological waste. Well, for glass, you get a lot of money. Five pieces of glass, you will get 10 euros almost, you know? So I think we can look at this again in future. So please, let's give them a round of applause. And thank you all for listening. OK. Well, the next thing is a poster and tea break, the usual venue. And uh, this is 10.53, 10.53. So we are still within a, so 20 minutes for the poster and the tea break. Do you have another announcement? They are going to come back. That's 11.40. Let's be here at 11.30. We have problems friend largely from the Science Association of Nigeria. We saw the committee, the committee of uh, fellows of the Science Association of Nigeria, and it was that committee that reported back to the body of uh, fellows of the Science Association of Nigeria. And in reporting back, we actually selected about 35 people 
scientists at that time who were thought should be uh, foundation members of this organization. And so they were set up. And uh, they, when it was inaugurated on the 8th of January, 1977. Well, the impetus was simply the recognition that apart from the Nigerian Science Association, which was the only forum where scientists met, that you needed a higher body, an honor society, as you have in most, uh, in most nations, Britain, US, Japan, China, everywhere, and also Russia. We yeah, had a very strong uh, capacity in science. I mean, it's, uh, I went to school. Um, when the country became independent in 1960, um, all the efforts, all the scientific efforts within the country in building capacity for science were quite uh, on banner. And uh, it became necessary that for Nigeria to move that uh, it was a center of its uh, set of its own academy. Not the science and societies had evolved, in fact, the major uh, Nigerian uh, science association uh, was formed that uh, uh, different disciplines and the Nigerian science association are pushing that there a need for the formation of an academy. And for that to happen, the Nigerian Science Association set up uh, uh, a committee that involved uh, the establishment of fellows of the uh, Science Association of Nigeria. And the fact that he was charged with the responsibility of working to create uh, an academy for Nigeria. I'm not sure in the world tries to establish. Academy of Scientists, Academy of Medicine, Academy of different areas of development. Because inside the academy, you have some of the best uh, people in their different fields. The necessity to uh, have a slightly or higher body than Science Association of Nigeria for which the academy sprang up. The necessity to have a body that will um, speak for science in the country, will recognize uh, excellence, promote excellence, and uh, support uh, scientific research for the benefits of the whole country. People like Ariel Madden, people like uh, Frank Oakley, who were part of the foundation members, um, but if we really want to go further back, even the setting up the um, Science Association of Nigeria, there were antecedents to that. There were more prominent uh, scientists like uh, Professor Eni Njogo, the first professor of botany, uh, Professor Nabamiro, um, and those they were the ones who really initiated the Science Association of Nigeria and half of that now from the Nigerian Academy of Science. I think it was give credit to an individual. That is credit will belong to William Madrebesia. Because while we all shared the view that there ought to be an academy, most of us did the talking, but he was the one who did the paperwork that led to the establishment of the academy. Yes, as I mentioned, it, you know, the Science Association was in India, and the Society of the Fellows of the Nigerian Science Association. And since that academy had been formed, and uh, we've been trying to seek greater interaction, those communities actually, if I recall rightly, were much younger scientists who were themselves not even validated as fellows. They sat together and they carefully selected. The first group of fellows who they consider to be the best scientists, medical people, engineers from the field of Nigeria. And their work was commended because they did their best to identify who they think should be on this list of first fellows of the Academy of Science.
There are about 48 or so foundation fellows, of which Professor Leminga, who was at that time Professor of Animal Science in the University of Badon, was the foundation president of the academy. Well, there were very many people, um, principally all the fellows of the then Nigerian Science Association, from the nucleus of the Nigerian Academy of Science. Some of the main constraints were set up by the academy itself. First, it restricted its number to 100 people. It was never to be more than 100. By the time I joined the academy, the time I became a fellow, there were never, there were not up to 96 people, there were 70 something people from when, I, when I became a fellow. So, having a small num number of people was a, a major constraint. My early days in the academy were actually challenging. And because I had my work in the university to perform, and I had my work with the teaching hospital to perform, but anyway, I managed to handle the um, responsibilities of the NRI, you know, secretary. We had little experience in how the academies are run, but um, we learned from court the way the Royal Society was run, the way the American National Academy of Science was run. We, we used it as a model, uh, encouraging regular meetings, uh, regular uh, colloquia, and regular lectures, and so on. And, and that will build up the consciousness, both of scientists and then of the society. Uh, the early days of the academy were tough. First, we didn't have any financial support from government. The major, the academy was chartered by the government and they were supported. The it was a lot of sacrifice. Every good mission in the world purposes. So there were a lot of sacrifice for the members to keep the academy going, to publish journals, and to encourage younger people to develop themselves. It was uh, a new world. A new and it sought wide acceptance with and without the country. And it, it was supposed to be modeled after the various academic sciences in uh, advanced countries. That is now. It has continued to grow and accepted by the international for the um, purpose of science in Nigeria. Well, the challenges were first the acceptance by the Nigerian society um, and um, recognition of uh, the Nigerian Academy of Science, and then uh, what the Nigerian Academy of Science was actually was up to until uh, after very many years that uh, people try to see that uh, well, there is need to support this uh, academy uh, in view of uh, the enormous assignment that it has uh, uh, thrust support itself. A defining moment, in my opinion, in the life of the Nigerian Academy of Science was when we started a partnership with the U.S. National Science Academy. And it, uh, one being when it's been able to host big international conferences. The academy also ultimately, I think, had another defining moment when it began to win grants outside of that uh, ASADI program in itself, when it became uh, competent enough uh, to be able to win grants from diverse international funders over the years and even local funders. So I think increasingly also uh, locally there has been greater recognition. I think one can easily underscore the association with the U.S. National Academy and the Asadi program as uh, one of the most defining moments of the 
academic, but things have changed dramatically since that time. What I would call the defining moments was when the academy was eminently relevant to the society. And it was because we had good funding. There have been several times that we have intervened in the affairs of the nation in regards to science. For example, I chaired a committee of the, of the academy that made an input to the Federal Ministry of Science and Technology that led to the development of a science policy for Nigeria. Well, the academy has been successful, I would say. That's part of the fact that you had a very, very tough and turbulent time of growth. Um, some of our lectures and the sick island and respective duties, but the academy had to maintain an office. The economy of science has grown, it has continued to grow, it hasn't failed at any time. This part the fact that it didn't have much financial support from the outside. So I think that's one major thing that we should commend the members who have continued to attend meetings, continue to make development, continue to encourage the younger generation of scientists to grow. I think in the century, we've achieved quite a lot. Uh, we, we have uh, Lang and Abuja, and I'm sure sooner than later, the we recognize Academy in Abuja, where conferences can take place, international groups can be invited to develop them to discuss issues of importance to Nigeria. The Academy has increasingly been uh, relied on by, by the government to um, look at some, some scientific problems in the country. Four years ago, the uh, federal government um, uh, engaged the uh, academy to accredit all the scientific parastatals in this country. And the job was carried out efficiently, and we were all very proud of the outcome of that exercise. The gathering of uh, the initial 45 fellows who vol voluntarily decide to establish the academy without any support from any government. Well, the National Academy of Science is the foremost uh, scientific body in the country. And um, the academy has been making efforts because it's going to be 40 years uh, to gain a charter which will be endorsed by the government. And that is in process and almost through now. But various uh, heads of governments have recognized the uh, functions of the academy by attending some of the meetings, granting audience, and also granting some uh, funds for activities. The defining moment of uh, National Academy of Science was when the uh, academy started getting recognition by people in government that will contribute to policy direction. And we uh, recognize at the president at the level of the Nigerian president and the ministers to make contribution to the growth of science and policies that will affect national development uh, is uh, one will say a defining moment for the academy. I'm glad to say uh, to to that history from Britain. I was uh as a facilitator. I obtained the documents for the landed uh and I'd like to say the matter materialized. I mean we we have never had a defining interest. And I was saying that we should begin to look at two different systems. We need the society to focus on our local science. Because that's how we're going to get to the final world. 
my children. But when we're looking at the problem that I am here, and you can to solve this problem, then we get a different moment. The question that I'm asking is that I'm asking you to look at. In the next 30 years, we should be able to say that the new government in Africa will do without a single scientist for direction in what to do about the policy for the people. The appointment of the um, president of NASA as a member of the General Presidential Advisory Council and President of the Media in one step with them by the um, president of the United um, and those I was in that region to remember that the only that I don't need to be that in this time that you can see. But you know that you get to one of the outfits of that effort from the Latin America World Journey. And then you know, upgrading Latin America World Journey. Efforts, I don't have become a professor doing my work, and one of these older to say, hey, I think you should be, uh, uh, you are more than qualified. I was already a professor for about 10 years then, and uh, I think you should be, <laughs> I think it should be something like uh, that's one thing led to the other, and suddenly I became a thing. Somebody nominated me without even telling me, but it got to the point of my having to submit the CV and so on that he now let me know what he was doing. All the moments in Academy of Science have been memorable. Every activity we have has, has been memorable because we're really going forward, we're moving forward. Everybody was keen to be in the highest, uh, to be recognized as being in the highest uh, as, you know, actually, one of the scientists in the country, being the president of the academy for three, two to three years, so this is when the practice moment. I know that all honors come from God. That's my belief. Because here was something I wasn't, you know, looking for and just came my way. And I now believe also that when God honors you, he wants you to serve. And that was why I did not hesitate to serve in all the capacities that I saved in the academy. Excited. In my own case, uh, Professor Richley, and to a lesser extent, Professor Joe says, you know, we're the ones who said, look, we are going to nominate you. Uh, to be linked into the fellowship, and I accepted. It is a society in science. It will be the aspiration of every scientist to want to belong to that at that level of eminence. It's a recognition of one's own efforts and one's own contribution to, uh, to the development of science, to the development of one discipline. And for the opportunity to be able to use this about the development of learning uh, in the country. So uh, it's been a privilege and an honor to want him to be in the academy. And when I was uh, elected into the academy in 1987, I felt very proud and very uh, 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 given an opportunity of this recognition to continue to do my public meetings. Yes. Sitting in my office and then receiving a letter to say that I was selected as one of the foundations of the Nigerian Academy of Science. This was in the 1970s. I was a young scientist. I was not even expecting it, but it happened. Well, what inspired me to join the Academy of Science is the academic excellence of the organization. And it's out to reach to members all over the country. I uh, obviously found that the, the, the monumentous in the organization, 
the matter we need to relate with and communicate. And as we are very privileged to testify for me. I was elected in 2004. And then um, I was, like I said, very proud to be elected. And since then, I've been trying to contribute my own duty quota for the advancement of the of the, um, of the academy. Um, we don't join the Nigerian Academy of Science. Uh, a fellow will nominate you, having recognized the quality of uh, your work the scholarship that was uh, evident in your research uh, output and nominate you. Uh, and this nomination was supported by another fellow and, and two other fellows, let me say, supported by three other fellows. And then the, the nomination was put before the General Assembly of the Academy and the entire fellowship voted. Uh, for you to be elected as a fellow. And um, if you didn't make the math scoring 50% of the votes, you will not be elected. So it was a kind of peer review exercise. I wanted to join because having achieved my career progression in the university and then knowing that the Academy of Science is also an, a higher body where I can contribute the development of science in the country. The Nigerian Academy of Science is the ultimate professional organization in Nigeria. It's the epitome of achievement in science. So the dream of every young scientist is how to become a fellow one day. And so when I was elected a fellow a few years ago, as one of the youngest members of the Academy of Science, I was quite proud and I was quite happy that um, I was elected. Fellowship management, and I've been in academy for more than 30 years. It's not been easy because there have been a challenges in the academy. Academy has made progress because in the past we have less than, uh, less than 100 uh, fellows, but now we have more than 30, more than 200 and 230 fellows. So that shows that the academy is uh, making progress. In the area of my work, it's not been easy because in the past we use uh, manual typewriters, but now uh, we now have a computer that helps to improve my work. With a more robust relationship with the Federal Institute of Industrial Research and leveraging on the mandate of the Institute, I can see that being uh, a strong force in policy statements in, in Nigeria and um, having more voice in governance because this is the time that NAS needs to be more visible, especially uh, in job creation. Looking strictly into the curriculum of the university, entrenching entrepreneurship skill, changing the orientation of the youth I want to congratulate the Academy for this landmark achievement of 14 years. It's not easy to bring so many heads together and uh, run a very viable Academy like that. Uh, we are doing, the, the Academy is doing very well. I'm wishing them all the best and uh, uh, proposing that with this 40th uh, anniversary, we are looking at possibility of stronger advocacy with corporates and also the university, trying to bridge the gap between the university, industry, and, uh, and government. Uh, they are the only one that can achieve the synergy of the triple helix.
that is government, academia, and the industry. And their strong advocacy will be able to achieve industrialization of the country and various programs that have been in place for that uh, success can be leveraged on this strong advocacy. I came across the uh, Nigerian Academy of Science around 2006, where we started a collaboration known as the Faculty of the Future. This was uh, a social initiative that focused on educating female graduates and uh, encouraging them through grants, significantly sized grants, to pursue uh, higher studies outside the country. The NES supported us by providing fellows who, as you know, have a lot of brain power to help screen suitable candidates, review their pieces, their materials, uh, and ensure that we selected the right people. Um, I'm very proud that in the last 10 years, Slumdesia and the NAS collaborating on this program have been able to uh, sponsor over 90 female uh, lecturers in more than 33 universities in Nigeria with several programs of PhD around the world. That's a fantastic uh, success story. Uh, especially because most of these candidates come back to Nigeria and contribute in their uh, original university. Dr. Thomas, you are sitting with this um, the academy for probably the last 10 years or more. We are really proud of the academy for what they have been doing the last 40 years. I have been in collaboration with the Academy of Science. I will have the capacity development for early career women in science. That's the last year. And now, uh, what is um, heavily involved in the uh, uh, project, uh, the workshop together. That almost all the workshops in the general that have been at time are in collaboration uh, with science. The major objective of NAS is to ensure that the benefits of science and technology are passed down or are enjoyed by Nigerians. Of the academy, the present day in Nigeria is to try and address problems that can be solved through science and technology. What you need is not um, necessarily all of the time individual consultants to advise you. Neither are government agencies by themselves alone sufficient. Uh, you need an independent, uh, competent, and unbiased advisor like the academy uh, filling in that role so that when you just want to know what the science says and what the science advises without any strings attached, the academy would be the organization to call in. The academy is making a lot of effort now, much more effort than it used to do in uh, researching or uh, trying to influence policy. It's very mostly policy. I would say research. You need increased funding for research. If not, we lose our relevance. The that points. Nigeria into, into the ways of science and to use science for the development of the nation. And a society. And its role is supposed to sit in the development of science and the application of science to improve the human condition, improve the capacity of children in Nigeria and serving the government. It's continues to fight for the development of science. It's quite um, extensive. So, so many other academies have sprung up from the Nigerian Academy of Science. Then, secondly, the government of uh, the day recognizes uh, the Nigerian Academy as the epitome of science in this country. Recognize, promote, and encourage uh, excellence. Uh, and to um, make sure that uh, 
the fruits of uh, scientific and scientific research are available for the benefit of uh, mankind. The National Academy of Science has been involved with a lot of things happening on in the country. For example, during the Ebola crisis, the Academy uh, played a lot of um, advisory role and, and also was quite involved in also combating that. Nigeria Academy of Science has been able to make some impact that have contributed uh, uh, immensely to some policy direction, which is affecting technological development and innovation, as well as science education in Nigeria. Once we get the identity right as well, and therefore get the governance right, and very importantly, uh, it's staffing right. Once all of those things are properly addressed, uh, the academy will become a much more uh, effective organization and in fact much more cherished and needed in the Nigerian society. Influence Nigeria culturally to become a culture that respects science and uses science. The academy has been able to draw government's attention to many problems that are of national interest. It has to maintain standards. All the standards are secured. And this is what is, this is uh, something that begins from uh, the people that we get uh, that we elect into the academy. If there are strict uh, procedures and processes and they are followed, then I think the academy has a bright future. Each of us should endeavor to have the young ones which will mentor and so that they will look up to us and we'll be sure that. When we pass on, which will inevitably, inevitably occur, we have younger ones to hand over the baton. Our government has to support the activities of the Nigerian Academy of Science, just as it is done all over the world. I see mass getting bigger. I see mass getting more and more recognized as a source for evidence so that some Policy, proper policies can be put in place, especially policies that uh, require understanding the right science behind it. Okay. The next person I want to see Nigerians uh, attaining Nobel Prize in tennis and his many applications to develop science, to develop new vaccines, to develop, you know, side agricultural problems, for example, where there are. Things are not doing well. 